Welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss the often misunderstood topic of space utilization in a SAN environment. But before we get to the SAN specific information, we need to have a little bit of review of the storage architecture and data on tap. First, we'll look at the layers of storage abstraction. Uh, NetApp controller, much like an onion and an ogre, has many layers to it. At the bottom layer, we've got the physical disk spindle, or LUN in a V-series uh, environment. Now these disk devices are combined together into RAID groups, which are then combined together to form an aggregate. Now within this aggregate, it's the first layer where we have the Waffle file system. And in this file system, we have other file systems, which we call flexible volumes. And within the flexible volumes, we are able to carve out space for our files. And today we're going to be talking about LUNs, which are a special type of file in data on tap, uh, more than just a simple ISO image or something like that. Uh, the next topic we need to cover is understanding the volume space guarantee option. Um, the default value is volume. Uh, when the volume space guarantee is set to volume, it guarantees uh, the full size of the volume within the aggregate that contains it. Um, you can also change these options later on after the fact, and we'll talk about that later on in the presentation. The next option is none, and no space is reserved um, for the volume. Uh, when you are in this configuration, space is allocated on a first-come, first-served basis. Um, so, for example, you can have uh, 10 16 terabyte volumes in a single 16 terabyte aggregate, and it's basically, uh, uh, as, this, as the presentation indicates, first come, first serve. The first volume to need um, physical blocks in the aggregate is the first one to get those physical blocks. Um, any other volumes, if, they, if there is no space in the aggregate to satisfy those requests, uh, will suffer the consequences, which we'll talk about later on. The third um, option in volume space guarantees is one that used to be fairly prevalent. Um, in modern times, it's not so common anymore. And basically, uh, the option is the file option. And what that does is it does not guarantee the volume in the aggregate. But any files that support space reservations within the volume are guaranteed within the aggregate. And of course, a LUN is uh, one of those special files. So how does space allocation work for aggregates and flexible volumes um, with some of the overhead that we have to contend with? So by default, um, in current versions of data on tap, 5% is allocated for snapshot reserve in the aggregate. You have 10% allocated for waffle metadata. This is not FlexVols. Um, this is going to be um, various waffle structures that are required to support your FlexVols. Flexible volumes or flex walls have 20% allocated for snapshot reserve, and the remainder is used for client data. Snapshot reserve is adjustable. Um, now, an easy way to explain snapshot reserve is to think of it kind of like a one-way quota. Um, it guarantees at least that much of the file system can be used by snapshots um, and cannot be used by user data. Now, snapshot data can grow beyond, say, the 20% default in a flexible volume, but user data cannot encroach on that 20%. So again, snapshot space usage, usage can grow beyond the snapshot reserve setting, but user data cannot encroach on that 20%. So a quick review on how snapshots work in Waffle. Uh, here we've created a uh, LUN in a flex wall, and the uh, SAN host, uh, the client system that has mounted up the file system in that LUN, has written three blocks to the disk, blocks A, B, and C. You then take a snapshot in data on tap. Now, effectively, A, B, and C, which uh, in the snapshot and the active file system are identical, so uh, even though they're effectively read-only blocks at this point, the client has no concept of that. The client goes ahead and overwrites block B, and in Waffle, 
Block B is uh, the active file system is now divergent from the snapshot data, so a new block is allocated. And as you can see, um, the active file system now has one block that's different from the snapshot. And so the snapshot space accounting would um, indicate that as much space as block B was now unique to that snapshot. Um, also a little blurb over here on the right, some best practices. Snapshot reserve should always be set to zero in volumes containing ones, and you want to disable the snapshot schedule. And the reasons for that, uh, number one, there are other mechanisms that handle um, space reservations um, and things of that nature. So snapshot reserve is a bit redundant in this case. Um, and disabling snapshot schedule is recommended because uh, ONTAP has no concept of the host file system, the host write cache, or, or any writes that may be in flight from the host to the LUN. And at, at no point in time is on, ONTAP ever aware if the file system inside that LUN is in a consistent state or not. So what the recommendation would be there uh, is to use uh, an application on the host side, such as SnapDrive for Windows or SnapDrive for Unix, um, to handle flushing the file system write cache and then having on tap take a snapshot of the LUN um, that way. And you can hit use uh, host side schedulers for that, such as Windows Task Scheduler or um, Cron Jobs in Unix um, or uh, whatever a Snap Manager application may use to leverage the other Snap products. Uh, one command you can use to kind of see how your file system is changing over time is the snapshot delta command. Um, as you can see in this case, hourly.1 has a pretty big divergence when compared to the other snapshots uh, and then compared to the, uh, from the most recent snapshot to the active file system, what your um, kilobytes changed is. Now this isn't really going to give you a very good idea for how much space you can get back for, um, uh, as a result of deleting any particular snapshot. To do that, you'll want to use the snap reclaimable command. Um, the syntax there is snap reclaimable, the volume name, and then the snapshot name. And uh, when you run that command, you'll get a little progress bar, a couple dots go across the screen for a few seconds. And it'll come back and tell you approximately how many blocks are unique to that snapshot uh, and will be freed if you go ahead and delete it. 